Hello everyone and welcome to another amazing Sunday afternoon in southern Oklahoma. Another 70 degree Sunday afternoon. It's just been, this winter has been incredible. It's, uh, I don't know what it's been. Uh, we're having so many, we had some 80 degree weather this week. That's right, 80 degree weather. It's windy out here today and we got some weather coming in tonight. You can see the cloud cover around. Uh, they're talking about a little rain. Not here, we close by. You know, we had two tents on uh, November 1 we had a half an inch on November on November um, 5 no 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 November 3 we haven't had any rain since and what is today December 5 is that December 5 we hadn't even had any rain since and we've had a just a terrible amount of rain this year a, a lack of rain I guess you should say a terrible amount because we didn't have much I guess that's what I'm trying to say but uh, but our lakes are low this lake's low the other lake uh, Canyon we can't even get in Eagle we can still launch in here but uh, the lake is really really low and we just need some rain our ground is hard as a rock um, it, we just need rain that's just all there is to it what can I say I want to give you a little update on Chris here uh, in this uh, in this uh, uh, Sunday afternoon chat, but first of all, I want to let you know I got to go fishing this week. That's right. I went down to fishing. I fished uh, Mill Creek Lake with my buddy John Hope, longtime buddy John Hope. John Hope is a guy that put uh, uh, electronic transmitters inside a big bass. I'm talking a bass, 8 pounds, 9 pounds, 10 pounds, 11, 12 pounds, giant bass. John caught has caught about as many big bass as anybody in the state of Texas. And um, area in anywhere in the world I guess but uh, but anyway he put electronic transmitters in those fish and and he was uh, he was able to follow them and and find their patterns and what they did he found that they lived in uh, in a certain area and that was their home and they had routes that they went out and traveled uh, usually during the night when they went out feeding and uh, if you didn't catch them out there during the night feeding it's really hard to catch them unless you could catch them in their house and and because he had a transmitter on them he knew right where they were he knew he knew he knew where their house was and uh, but anyway uh, I fished with John and, and I'm gonna tell you if you ever wonder if you ever wonder if Jimmy Houston doesn't catch any fish someday if he zeroes well i did it that day i did it that day at mill creek neither john or i caught a bass all day long neither one of us and uh i did have one bite on a spinner bait uh john had one bite i think on a jig or a worm and we missed both of them so we, we didn't catch a single fish and that lake we actually picked that lake because of a topo map uh looking at topo maps looking at some areas where we thought we could catch some big fish and uh, that lake has produced an 18 pound bass so it, it has produced big bass and uh but uh, uh so we we had some areas we wanted to fish when we got into those areas though and the topo map that uh showed that that water to be 14 foot deep and it was 18 foot deep in those areas where we thought the fish would be and i don't know if there were fish there there weren't any fish there in that eight foot water i can tell you that but uh but we were just not able to catch any fish we went to holbrook the next day my buddy josh jones had recommended holbrook and holbrook has, has got quite a few fish in it it's a it's a beautiful little lake it's got uh a lot of houses on it, a lot of docks on it, a lot of piers on it, and it's a beautiful lake. I don't know, it's a few hundred acres probably. Uh, and we caught six fish there is all we caught. They're, they're mostly beautiful, big, fat, healthy fish. And we caught them by live scoping fish underneath shad. Uh, but they, we couldn't hardly get those fish to bite. I finally uh, I caught one on an Alabama rig. I caught uh, uh, three or four more on the swim bait. John caught one on spinner bait and another, I think, on, on a swim bait also, or spin jig. I think he might have been using a spin jig. But uh, but we only caught six is all we caught. So we really had a we really had a tough day. I know my hair's blowing all over the place, but we had a tough day out there. Uh, but uh, but we got to go fishing a couple of days. That was good. Uh, for the most part, Chris has been here with me this week. I went back to Sherry's that night, and uh, I had been with Chris for quite a while over there at home. And now I've, and I brought Chris back to the ranch. I've had her all this week, and I want to give a little update on Chris because I haven't talked to her about what's happening with Chris the last couple two or three weeks and some of you have started to ask uh, and I can tell you that uh, I, I almost I hate to say it but almost nothing uh, Chris is really just about where she was a couple of weeks ago uh, she went through a period of time where her her uh, speech improved dramatically in about a week I mean she was just saying things and complete sentences and stuff and I was working with her every day on it and uh, but we've hit a sort of a roadblock, I guess. It's sort of a, we're not regressing. We're not going back the other way. But we sort of hit a roadblock, and uh, and Chris is just um, about like she was a couple, two, three weeks ago. That's all I can say. Uh, she seemed like she's lost a little confidence in some things, and I'm having a hard time keeping her faith strong. I, I promised her. I promised her. Uh, that she would walk because God promised me she would walk and I promised her she would walk and I told her I just believe me trust me honey trust me God told me you were gonna walk and you're gonna walk 
and uh, and also her speech is going to get back to normal and she'll have that sweet voice back that she's always had she'll be giving those deer uh, reports that i'm giving on friday night and saturday mornings now she'll be shooting video of the deer and telling you about what all happened with the deer and the, the deer I think love Chris a lot more than they love me, but uh, some of them again to start to love me quite a bit. But uh, but anyway, I, I still am 100% fully believing Chris is going to recover. Uh, I've got a comment or two that said your wife's not going to walk again. Uh, I hate to disagree with people, but but she will walk again. And you know what I, I've had to do her lately? I've a actually brought her down here in my big ram truck. You know, we've been bringing her in a Cadillac because it sits low to the ground. She can get in and out of it easily, but uh, or we can get her in and out of it easily. She can't do that by herself. But I brought her in my big ram truck, which is a big four-wheel drive ram, and sits up high, and, and uh, she sets, sets her one foot, her good uh, leg, her left leg, her left foot, up on that uh, on that step bar and steps right up there, puts her butt on the seat, and and then uh, she slides right on in there. So she's getting in and out of that big ram truck good. So that's a really good positive sign right there. I took her over with me to uh, Savage Equipment uh, and Savage Processing, uh, where we took a load of pecans over this week. Uh, our, our trailer will hold about 3,000 pounds, and I took a load over there. Apache had already taken some over, but uh, I actually took uh, took her and took her with me and took a load over there, and and, uh, and that was good. She enjoyed that trip. And, and we really enjoyed going over there and it was uh it was on it was yesterday and so there wasn't many of the uh, savages around my, my friends i'm real good friends with the entire family and uh wasn't many of them around but i did visit, uh, visit with some of the folks around uh, i did want to mention uh the catch of the day channel if you're not subscribed to our catch of the day channel uh, I know you're, you may be on Facebook, you may be on, we, as a matter of fact, we're on TikTok now too. We had a, a video we did down there on TikTok where we got busted by a Texas Game Ranger this week. And the video is over on TikTok. We've had 480,000 views on that silly thing already. Uh, but uh, the, the, the game warden was pulling a, uh, a horse trailer. Yeah, oh, we looked like a horse trailer. We thought it was a food truck. We went in to try to get some food for the food truck. and. It was a Texas game warden, but uh, we had a lot of fun with him. We did a little TikTok video. We are posting videos up on TikTok now, so you might want to get over there. I think we've just been doing it this week, and we got about 50,000 followers over there. Uh, no, we got about 10,000 followers over there. Excuse me, 10,000 followers. That one video, those had almost a half a million views on it when the game ranger, game ranger busted me over there. But, uh, but mention to the Catch of the Day channel, if you're not subscribed to our Catch of the Day channel, we read a scripture every single morning. We have a devotional every single morning that is built around fishing, and we have a fishing tip for every day. You will become a better fisherman. You'll become a better person if you'll get over there and get on our Catch of the Day channel. Uh, if you go over there, it's on YouTube. If you go over there, sometimes they try to sell you a book or two. That's not me trying to sell you those books. You can buy the books from us on JimmyHouston.com if you want. And uh, we'll be happy to personalize them, autograph them. They make wonderful Christmas gifts because they're very inexpensive. And, uh, and we'll ship them right to you and get them there by Christmas. Uh, it's three weeks to Christmas time. And uh, we've got a lot of other nice stuff on there. We've got Jimmy Houston Rod and Reels. We've got a lot of, a lot of Lucky Strike Lures on there. Uh, we've got our Blaze Series Rod and Reels and some other stuff on there. We've got T-shirts and hats. Just a fantastic gifts for Christmas time, uh, which is, like I said, just around the corner. We still uh, be shipping pecans all the way through December. Maybe in a week or two into January, we've shipped out just a tremendous amount of pecans. So if you haven't ordered your pecans, go to JimmyHouston.com, and you can see what we have there in the pecans. Most people order the Custom Crack, which is a five-pound bag of pecans. It's about, about 25 bucks plus shipping and handling. And that's what most folks order is the uh, uh, the custom crack pecans. But uh, they make wonderful gifts for all your uh, family and friends. They make wonderful gifts for your employees. We have several companies that order those for their employees as a Christmas gift. And we've never, ever had a complaint on the pecans. Never, had, ever had a complaint on the pecans. Well, I take that back. We had one. Babe Winkleman. Y'all know Babe Winkleman who has a great fishing show up in the north. I think he's still got his fishing show. He may have may have retired. Uh, he's getting up there kind of old. So he may have retired. But, uh, but great, Babe was a great friend. And, and uh, uh, Carico, who we buy our television time to buy uh, pecans and sends out to all of their producers. And he's one of their producers that, that uh, take, they take care of his television time for him. And, uh, and he complained when he got his pecans that all he had in there was uh, not hardly any pecans. I mean, almost no pecans, just a bunch of shells. And come to find out that the girls down at Carico's office had taken one of the bags of pecans and they had been 
over the period of a, a few days or a week had been going in there and, and eating, you know, just un, uncracking one. They're custom cracked to run through the machine so you can just take your hand and, and get the meat out and, and eating the pecans and putting the shell back in there. So Babe Winkle would pretty much got a, a sack of shells. <laughs> and he complained about that pretty heavily. He really did. That's the only complaint I know of on Jimmy Houston pecans. But I gotta tell you, it couldn't have happened to a more perfect person than Babe. <laughs> And I say that because he's a friend. He is a friend, and uh, but it was pretty cool. They, they sent him another bag of pecans that, that actually was good. But they make wonderful gifts. They make wonderful gifts. They're fresh pecans. Absolutely, they'll be the best tasting pecans that you've ever had. I guarantee you. And like I said, we got a lot of the gifts on there too. Uh, we've uh, we've got a, a trip uh, planning coming up here pretty soon to uh, Louisiana. Uh, I'll be going down to Louisiana before the end of the month and fishing for speckled trout, probably some bass down there too. Going to Venice, Louisiana, fishing with my buddy Roland Martin and Walt. Reynolds and uh, and Jeff Shaw, my buddy from uh, uh, O'Reilly's, which you've seen Jeff on our show a lot over the last several years. Jeff and I fish together a lot. Jeff is just he just loves fishing, and he's getting ready to retire from O'Reilly's, I think, next month, and so he'll be able to go fishing with me a lot more, which will be great. And uh, uh, but we're going to be fishing in, uh, down there in Venice, and uh, we might even do a catch, clean, and cook down there. Uh, what we might do, we might do a catch and clean, and maybe I can have the restaurant to the place where we're staying. I think we're staying at the lighthouse. I don't know if it's a little lighthouse or lighthouse. The place that Roland and and, uh, and Walt have stayed at for years and fished with for years. Roland's got a great guy down there lined up that is just absolutely outstanding. And then Roland just brags about him all the time. And I'm going to tell you, Roland's a guide himself. For him to brag on a guide, the guide's got to really be good. But we might do a catch, clean, and cook down there. Uh, while we're at it if we can because that's going to be a lot of fun but we'll, we'll have some YouTube stuff on there me and Roland in there and we'll also have some um I'll uh, be making some regular television shows. So we will be on ESPN here in a couple, two or three weeks, beginning the first Saturday, I believe, in January. We'll also be on the Discovery Channel on the first Sunday in January. So you'll be able to catch the show there. I think it's at 7.30 in the morning on ESPN2, and I think it's about 5.30 or 6, or 6 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning on the Discovery Channel. We'll still be on all of our other channels, AT&T Sports Southwest. The World Fishing Network, WFN, will be on the Pursuit Network, the Hunt Channel. Uh, we're on Plex TV uh, streaming. You can watch Jimmy Houston anytime you want uh, there on Plex TV. Uh, Wired to Fish, Wired to Fish. Heartland Network, uh, Family uh, Channel. Um, so many, I can't remember them all, but we're on about a dozen different networks. The new shows will be beginning in January. Uh, those of you that got our uh, newsletter uh, in December, I've heard nice comments about that. We'll be continuing to do that. If you want to receive our monthly newsletter, just go to uh, jimmyhouston.com. There's a little pop-up there uh, where you can leave your email address. That's all we need is your email address. We don't need your address or anything other than email. And uh, we'll be sending you out a newsletter once a month that kind of tells you what we're going to be doing, uh, where my appearances are going to be. We've got a lot of appearances scheduled for 2022 already. Uh, the, I know the virus is still going going on in a lot of places, but uh, most places are not paying a whole lot of attention to it. Uh, so uh, you'll be able to tell a lot. We'll be giving away some stuff there on that newsletter and uh, catching you up on some of our sponsors. One of the things about that newsletter, some of y'all that got it, and I think we sent out over 7,000 the first of this month, uh, newsletters to folks. Uh, if you want to check out anything on any of our sponsors, you just hit their logo on there, like High Seas Fishing Line, like uh, Mercury Motors. Uh, we had a great Mercury tip on there uh, about taking care of your full f fuel through the winter. It's just a fantastic tip. You need to really pay attention to that. If you're going to leave your boat setting for a month or two without running your outboard engine, you need to make sure you have stabilizer in that fuel uh, so you don't damage something through the winter time on your, on your, on your Mercury engine. Um, you can hit any sponsor we've got, uh, high tech, look in there on our fishing rods, uh, Garmin, uh, Bass Pro Shop, Ranger, uh, Tracker, uh, Power Pole, on and on and on, all of, our, all of our great sponsors on there, Lucky Strike Lures, and you will actually go to that company's website, so it's easy to go in there and if you want to look around and look on something on those companies' website, just hit their logo on our newsletter and you'll be able to go to their website and look at whatever you might be looking for. So anyway, uh, we are having this incredibly beautiful weather. We've got some bad weather forecasts, maybe even some snow in the forecast, but you know, we're gonna supposed to have it here coming up pretty quickly, like tomorrow, it's supposed to be in the 40s. Uh, today it's in the 70s. Uh, it's supposed to be in the 40s. But then three or four days from now, we got another 70 degree day. So it's just kind of like a roller coaster bit of weather out here right now. We're going, we're going up and down. Guys and girls, you know we have three weeks to Christmas. That's about all. Three, I uh, may, maybe I think maybe it might be three weeks from yesterday or something. I'm not real sure, but uh, but we've only got about three weeks until Christmas. 
And uh, so I know that everybody's out there hustling around trying to get Christmas gifts. I understand there's a lot of shortages uh, in things that you might want to buy. I haven't done any Christmas shopping yet, so I can't really tell you that. I do most of my Christmas shopping two, three days before Christmas. <laughs> We have our Christmas usually at our house, the Houston household, uh, long about uh, Christmas Eve, <laughs> the day before Christmas. So I usually do most of my shopping on like 22, 23, since Christmas is a big Christmas at our house on 24. And uh, so I usually spend a couple days there and I just go on a marathon shopping spree and spend a couple of whole days running around from store to store to store to store to store and just buying whatever I see that I think somebody's going to like. Uh, I don't make a whole lot of planning on it. I just go around and, uh, and do it. And I usually buy a couple of things for myself too because I've been a good boy. <laughs> That's pretty debatable, I know. I know people are saying that, but uh, but uh, sometimes I buy me a couple items for myself. Something that I think, well, I don't think anybody might buy me this, so I'll just go ahead and buy it for myself. Treat yourself to a nice Christmas present. And that way, that'd be at least one you don't have to return, okay? That's all I'm saying. But here's the main thing about Christmas. Christmas is not about Santa Claus. It's not about even giving gifts, although that's where the gift giving started. Uh, when uh, when they brought baby Jesus gifts, ex very expensive gifts as a matter of fact, because they realized that he was the savior of the world. But this is what we're celebrating is the birth of Jesus Christ. And uh, I just want to remind everybody to think about Jesus as much as you possibly can during these next three weeks, because we're celebrating the birth of the savior of the world, the savior of the world, the individual that died on that cross to pay for our sins, to pay for the bad stuff that you and I have done in our lifetime. That's what we're celebrating, and that's what's really, really, really important. So all the Christmas parties, all the gifts, all the Christmas trees, uh, all the going to Bass Pro Shop and letting your kids uh, visit with Santa Claus, keep in mind that Jesus is the reason for the season. We are celebrating the birth of Jesus. And uh, just kind of pause a little bit every day and say, thank you, Jesus, for what you've done in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to earth here to die on the cross for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me another beautiful day right here in America. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I tell you what, I bet, I bet you Jesus is noticing every single time you say thank you. And I bet he rewards you for every single time you say thank you, Jesus. Involve him in everything you do these next three weeks, and I promise you, he's going to do some spectacular things in your life. Guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one today, and remember, I sure do love you.